Jokers, folks, this ain't no dang jokers. You gotta be flipping my flapjacks every time the Russell and the small caps seem like they're taking a step in the right direction. They go right back the other way, right back down. Russell down another 1% plus here today. Ton of the small caps getting hurt in a major, major way. Gotta get into in this video some stocks that I bought very heavily today. I'm not playing any more games in this market, okay? Warren Buffett. Very interesting comments around inflation inflation stocks and some of the best stocks and worst stocks to play during inflation environments. Then we're gonna get into some Kathy Wood comments that came out here today, literally just a couple hours ago, around what she has to say, okay? So we got a lot to cover in this video. I hope you guys enjoy this. As always, all I ask in return is that you smash that like button. And that's literally it, guys. Flip my flapjacks, I appreciate it, okay? Let's talk about the hood first off, okay? So Robin Hood reports earnings last night. Uh, obviously, Wall Street didn't take that as a positive. This has become, uh, kind of, I mean, it's kind of like a meme stock, right? Uh, t down 10% plus here a day, right? And when you see a move like that down, it's gonna pull confidence down for a whole host of stocks that are in the retail trader community. It doesn't have to just be meme stocks, but obviously it pulls a ton of them down. Look at AMC here today, right? AMC down 8.5%. That's gonna pull confidence down even bigger when it comes to a lot of these stocks, right? And also, it can can start margin calls. Let's keep it honest, right? It can start margin calls if somebody's margin down and you get some of these 10%, 8% downward moves. Look at Wish stock. That's another stock that's gotten pretty darn popular in, in those communities. And look at that stock. It just continues to get devastated down nearly 10% here today on basically no news with that stock. And it's just vicious, vicious. Then you have this come out, okay? About an hour ago. Kathy Wood says stocks are not in a bubble. Now, in a day in which the market's getting destroyed, or at least a lot of these small Small caps, high growth companies have been getting destroyed or, or meme stocks, I like it. the whole bunch, right? All, they all kind of get tied into one, man. And uh, on a day when, you know, those stocks are having some trouble, it's not always the best look to have a headline like that. It almost like becomes a meme in itself, right? But as far as what Kathy Wood have to say, I think she has some really important things to say here, okay? Ork Invest, Kathy Wood on Thursday, defended her innovation-focused strategies in the wake of investors betting against her funds, a la Michael Burry. We covered that earlier in the week, okay? She says, I don't think we're in a bubble, which is what I think many bears think we are, Wood said on CNBC's Tech Check on Thursday. In a bubble, and I remember the late 90s, our strategies would have been cheered on. You remember the leapfrogging of analysts making estimates one higher than the other. Price targets one higher than the other. We have nothing like that right now. In fact, you see a lot of IPOs or special purpose acquisition companies, the SPACs, coming out and falling to earth. We couldn't be further away from the bubble. I gotta say, Kathy Wood makes a really, really interesting point. In a bubble scenario, it is certainly a, a time period in, in a bubble scenario, right? Where everything's flying high, it's euphoria, right? And I can say we've definitely had a lot of those vibes and feelings in the market back in February, but that was February. Now it's, uh, what, middle to late August now we're talking about, and I can tell you, that's not the vibe at all. Many of those high-flying stocks since February are down anywhere from 50, 60, 70%, a ton of those stocks, right? Significantly off 52 week highs. And it's not like you're just seeing all these IPOs and SPACs come out and they're like, whoa, that one just boomed and boomed. No, that's not happening right now in this market, okay? So I will say, Kathy Wood makes some phenomenal points right there. Now, in regards to hedge funds and other folks betting against her funds ETF, she says, when I see such negative sentiment out there, especially when it comes to valuation and longer term horizons, investment time horizons, I actually feel a little more comfortable. I like the bad news, Wood said. The discounting is worse now than the news will actually be. I actually feel better in that environment for our strategies. And I will say, runs again, I agree with Kathy Wood in this scenario as well. The last thing I wanna see is everybody uh, in, in a euphoric state and cheering on stocks, buying everything in sight, right? In stocks, uh, I mean, honestly, in February, I felt really, really uncomfortable, right? And maybe even a little bit into March. It was an uncomfortable feeling. There was just, a, it was a different vibe, right? And it starts to get a little scary. The valuations get pushed up so high, you have to pay nosebleed prices if you wanna buy anything. 
And in that type of market, I'll say I definitely don't feel comfortable. I feel so much more comfortable when I'm buying stocks that are down 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 percent from 52 week highs. I can tell you that much, okay? Although, it, you know, it's like catching a falling knife, right? As they say. And absolutely, I'm, I'm catching all these knives and I'm getting my hands sliced every time as it goes down. And I'm fine with that. I feel much more comfortable than uh, when the knives are all above your head and they haven't fallen yet. And you're like, oh man, these knives are all about to fall and, and one's gonna hit me in the head. And I'm like, you know, just counting the clock. That's what it felt like in February. And I tell you right now, it's not like that at all. Wood said that much of her bearishness on her funds is focused around inflation and interest rates going higher. However, the portfolio manager's macro thesis focuses on deflation from innovation. The innovation around which we have centered our research, these five platforms, Platforms, DNA sequencing, robotics, energy storage, artificial intelligence, and blockchain technology are barely off the ground, said Wood there. Arc traded around flatline on Thursday. She says the seeds for all these platforms were planted in the 20 years that ended in the tech and telecom bust and ended in tears. And there's a lot of muscle memory around that, but that's not what's going on right now. I don't think the market is ready for this. We've never been at a more provocative time for innovation in history, Wood said. So that's very, very interesting comments there. Warren Buffett, I saw this come out. Warren Buffett says that these businesses do best during periods of high inflation, which right now we're definitely in a period of high inflation. How long it will last? That's a, that's a popular subject, right? It could last another, uh, let's say month, three months, six months, maybe 12 months. I can tell you this crazy inflation will not keep up forever. That's one thing I know for dang sure, okay? From used cars to gasoline to groceries, inflation continues to raise the price of goods in the US. The Consumer Price Index, which measures how much consumers pay for an assortment of products, jumped 5.4% last month from where it was in July of 2020, matching its biggest jump since 2008. Though some economists and other financial experts say that the current rate of inflation is nothing to worry about, inflation has become virtually impossible to avoid. Yeah, I feel like on Millennial Money, we've been talking about that for months, okay? But when it comes to investing, Berkshire Hathaway CEO Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time, one of the greatest businessmen of all time, if no one knows who Warren Buffett is, okay, says there are some businesses that are more likely to succeed than others. At a 2015 annual Berkshire Hathaway shareholder meeting, Buffett was asked which of his company holdings were best poised to thrive during a period of high inflation, which is what we're going through right now. Warren Buffett's response was the best business to own is one that doesn't require continuous reinvestment because it becomes more and more expensive as the value of the dollar drops. The best business during inflation are the businesses that you can buy and then you don't have to keep making capital investments. Subsequently, Buffett said adding that any business with heavy capital investment tends to be a poor business to be in in inflation and often is a poor business to be in in general. Businesses like utilities or railroads keep eating up more and more money and aren't as profitable, he explained. He prefers to own companies that people have a connection to, a la brand strength, okay? Brand strength, which is something I definitely value if it's a consumer company in a massive way. Instead, a brand is a wonderful thing to own during inflation, said Warren Buffett. Buffett said that's companies like Seize Candies, which they've owned since 1972, okay? So yes, absolutely, it, you know, brand is everything, especially if you're dealing with consumers and uh, high inflation environments, yeah, probably not the best for a lot of those companies. And the crazy thing is, you know, the, the inflation, it, it's gone insane, but it could come down real quick as well. These are definitely some things to keep in mind, and then you could also end up in a deep deflation environment and it happens so quick, Wall Street's always late to the game to recognize that. Something important to keep in mind. So here today at this household, it's another red fireplace day. We got a chance to turn it green yesterday. It was a green fireplace yesterday and man did it feel good. I had to dust off that button for the, 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 green, the green fireplace, okay? But yeah, we're back to red here today and so I spent a whole lot of money on some stocks today, okay? Well, first off, 
the Corsair, the CRSR. Look at this stock here today. It's 25 and some change, man. Like when does a pain stop in Corsair gaming? It's just, it's been vicious for the stock, let's be quite honest. And you know, I'm looking at the stock at 25 here today, and I'm like, I can't just sit on my hands and see Corsair at a 25 and be like, I'm not gonna buy Corsair. Like, no, I just can't do that, man. And so yes, I had to buy the stock heavily, okay? In this account, I bought $27,564, and I bought another $764 in that account there. In this one here, I bought $50,000 plus dollars of Corsair Gaming. I'm not playing around. I'm not making five 10K type buys anymore uh, when it comes to especially Corsair Gaming, okay? I gotta load the boat in, in, in a massive, massive way on this stock, okay? Now, if I added up all the shares in all the different accounts, I'm now over $25,000 thousand shares of Corsair gaming. And here's the thing, I'm not done buying this stock. There's no way I'm done buying this stock. It, it's just like, like flat out, if it stays around here, if it keeps moving down, which, you know, who knows when this downtrend's gonna end, eventually it's gonna end, I promise you that, but we don't know when it's gonna end, but as long as this downtrend continues for the stock, I will continue to buy and buy and buy and buy. And then let me be very clear, this is my number one play for 2024 call options when those come out uh, toward the middle of September. So I'm gonna be watching those like a hawk, and yeah, I welcome the stock. If it wants to continue to go down to 24, 23, 22, whatever, okay? I'll gladly continue to buy, and like I said, my number one stock I'm most interested in, and by the way, if you're interested in what specific specific strike prices I could be looking on for call options. And by the way, if no one knows what call option is, just think of it as this, okay? This essentially would be me placing a bet that Corsair stock is gonna be above certain prices by January of 2024, okay? The strike prices I'd be looking at, $20, uh, if they had a $22.50, I'd be looking at those. Uh, $25, obviously. $27.50, I would also be looking at $30 strikes. And believe it or not, I would even be looking at $35 strikes for Corsair Gaming, which is way out of the money, and that's a high risk play. Like, let's imagine, let's fast forward and imagine, you know, we're, we're you know, a month from now in the future, and imagine Corsair Gaming's trading at $24, $25, something like that, right? I mean, to all of a sudden go way out of the money like that, 35 is, it's definitely far, but I can tell you, in the stock market world, January 2024 is like a million miles away, man. And uh, I think the you know the revenues will be in a different place, net income will be in a different place, hopefully a lot better place. And uh, the way the company is viewed by Wall Street will be in a very, very different place come that time. So yeah, that's all the, the, the prices I'm looking at there for Corsair. And by the way, I just produced a video late last night around Corsair Gaming and where I think the stock will bottom at. So if you're at all interested in Corsair Gaming, make sure you check out that video it's on this channel okay another stock i loaded up on here today i think people know this one it's the chef okay no doubt tattoo chef it was down today it was back to where it was uh, like two days ago and so i said uh, i kind of gotta buy some more chef here today so i bought 3100 and then a 1500 and then another 3100 of the chef there and then in this account here i bought 1716 shares and then another 506 shares uh, those are at 16 dollars and eight cents as far as those shares purchased there. So the chef, now I am over 62,000 shares of the chef and I'm still not done buying that one. I plan to continue to buy that one, especially on any major drops, okay? It seems to definitely have support in the 15 range, like, you know, it seems to wanna to flirt with getting down in the 15s and then it pops right back up. I kinda of consider Tattoo Chef's uh, real like 52 week low is kinda of being around like the 1550 range, so if for any reason it drops through that 1550 range, I will gladly buy more shares of stock as far as me for 2024 call options. It is my number three stock. I am most interested in 2024 calls. So a little different strategy when it comes to Tattooed Chef, right? I'm loading the boat on shares of Tattooed Chef, but the, the thing that is hard when it comes to Tattooed Chef for 2024 calls is the fact that the company is not profitable yet, right? Not profitable yet. Corsair Gaming, I feel unbelievably comfortable buying 2024 calls because it's a revenue story, but it's also a net income story. Tattooed Chef, it's really about the revenues, and sometimes it's really up to Wall Street when they want to recognize when they're going to respect 
affect the way Tattoo Chef has grown their revenues, right? I mean, we just saw them. They put a 46% revenue growth last quarter, 62% branded revenue growth, and Wall Street did not respect that. The stock went down, what, 16, 17% the next day. So the fact is, you know, if you're thinking about placing a time-sensitive bet, it gets scarier for a stock like Tattoo Chef versus Corsair Gaming. With that being said, it is still my number three stock I am most interested in for call options, okay? And by the way, if you didn't get to check out a video I put out a couple days ago on when and where I think the stock will bottom, definitely check out that video. I put out that video a couple days ago on the channel, so definitely check out that if you're at all interested in the chef. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you're wondering like, how the heck do you do this stock market stuff? How do you research these stocks? What do you look for? How do you run portfolios? You're seeing all these deals all over the place for a lot of these small caps and you're looking to get involved in the market and you want to download everything from my brain directly to your brain, check out the pinned comment down there. That'll be to apply for the private stock group, private Discord chat, and learn literally everything I possibly know. And uh, yeah, when you're in these type of markets, usually the time to take advantage and uh, not just kind of sit on the sideline forever and be like, oh, I'll get to it next year or a couple years from now. Uh, in a hot market, yeah, that's the, time to, that's the time to kind of chill out, right? In these sort of markets, you got to make sure you're taking advantage. Thank you for watching and have a great day.